Hey everyone, this video is going to be an end-to-end -end walkthrough showing how to use single sign-on between Azure Enter ID and Snowflake. So first, why would we want to do this? Well, that's pretty simple, isn't it? Signing in with usernames, passwords, and pass keys interrupts the user experience in our applications, and we always want to present as few sign-on experiences as possible. With single sign-on, we can have users authenticate with a single identity provider, such as Enter ID in this case, and use that ID to authorize access to additional backend systems throughout the user flow. So in this example, we're gonna configure a React app so that users can sign on with their Microsoft 365 ID and then use that ID to access Snowflake data within the application. And while we're gonna use React, this really would apply to any kind of an application that can use Intra um, OAuth and it would apply to any other uh, backend system as well that can use uh, Intra access keys to uh, authorize users. So in this tutorial, we're first gonna set up the Entra app registration using the Azure portal, and then we'll take information from that registration to configure a SAML trust with Snowflake via security integration. And then we'll use React to sign into Entra, fetch the access token from Entra, pass that on to Snowflake along with the query, and we'll see the results come back. And as a bit of a teaser, this is what the application is going to look like when we're done. But first, we need to set up the Entra and Snowflake side of the equation, make a few changes to the uh, React app that we already have, and then we can get to this point where the user has this experience. So before we get started, I just want to mention there are some prerequisites to doing this integration. Clearly, these are security configurations, so you do have to have permissions to do it. So first, you'll need permission to create app registrations within Entra. You can use that on Azure Portal or CLI, but you do have to have permissions to do that. The second, you'll need similar permissions within Snowflake to create the a SAML integration. So this will require you to either be an account admin, uh, that role automatically gets the permission to do that, um, but it is possible to create other roles that have a, a global create integration privilege um, within Snowflake. But most likely, unless you're the Snowflake administrator, you need to work with an, an admin to get this set up. But we'll go through it in this uh, tutorial because I do have these permissions in both systems. And then third, the user sign ID in Entra should match the Snowflake user ID. For example, if the user signs in to Entra with user at company.com, then their Snowflake user ID should be the same. And in, in this case it is, but I'll, I'll show you how those get mapped together in detail uh, during the tutorial. Okay, with that, let's start the configuration. Okay, to get started, I'm gonna go into the Azure portal and I'm going to go find my Enter panel. And then when it, within Enter, I need to create a new app registration. So we'll look at app registrations. I definitely need a new one, so I'm going to click the new registration button. And let's give this a name. So this is going to be the display name. So this was what user will see. So I'm going to call this AI Workbench because there's some other things I'm going to do with this registration later, even though Snowflake isn't really, this isn't an AI integration, but I'll use this for something else uh, down the road. Then the redirect URI is important because I need to tell Entra uh, where it is sending the browser after the user logs in. It's very important to get this right. We'll kind of take a look at that again later. So, so far this is pretty straightforward um, app registration if you've ever made one, nothing's any different. Now what's gonna be different here is we need to expose an API. And by exposing the API, this is what's gonna enable us to have access tokens from Entra that we can then give to uh, Snowflake. So, we need to add an application URI. Um, you can make this anything you want, but I'm gonna use the default, which is simply the client ID for the application with API in front of it. And then we add a scope. So the scope becomes important because when we request tokens, we have to uh, tell uh, MSAL, which is the uh, Microsoft uh, uh, library for, for getting tokens, like what scope we want. So this scope, session scope DW users, this is documented for, um, for Snowflake. So Snowflake essentially tells us what the scope needs to be. And I'll, I'll provide a link for you know, reading their documentation. So who consent? Uh, admins and users can consent. Um, we're really only gonna use user consent here, but admin could consent, but we're not gonna use that feature. Now, if the admin does consent, this is what they're gonna see on the screen as they provide consent. Uh, that doesn't matter, um, but user consent is important. And I'll just put in a couple of strings that'll mean something to me, but the, you could put anything in here, but they are required. State is enabled, obviously, and then we'll go down and save this scope. All right, so I'm gonna go back and copy that scope string. And there are a few, there are a few strings I'm gonna need here to put into uh, both uh, um, 
Snowflake in into the React app. So this is the first one. So this is the scope, and you'll see this again when we're developing or when we're adding the uh, the authentication to the React app because we'll need this scope string. And I'll explain exactly what the string means later. But the tenant and app ID. These are every app registration has a tenant and app ID, and they are what they sound like. So tenant is the directory. So in this case, you know, it's called cur and the uh, app ID is the identifier for the specific app registration that we just created. So the tenant will be the same for all of your apps within one um, 365 environment or one Azure environment. And then the app ID is going to be different for every registration. So we'll need these three values. So I'm just going to save them a notepad for now. We'll come back to them in a minute. And uh, we should be done with the app registration at this point. Yep, I don't think there's anything else we need to do. Okay, so now we've I'm going to put a check mark next to Entra. So we've done the Entra configuration, and let's move on to do the matching Snowflake configuration. So those things we just did in Entra, we need to now tell Snowflake about. So we need to tell that it can trust this app ID, it can trust this uh, tenant, and and uh, we'll let it know what uh, what to expect when it gets uh, when it gets a token, how to validate it. So here I have kind of a boilerplate. Um, this is in the Snowflake docs, but uh, I'm going to put this in. So we have a few fields we need here. Um, one is this integration needs a name. This is just where we refer to it within the Snowflake environment. The type is an external OAuth. It's enabled, obviously. Azure means basically Azure Entra. And then these three red strings are what we need to paste these new values in. So the first one, tenant. Uh, and I, I have some placeholders that you can see here. So, so that's going to be the string that uh, that we're, we're telling what the issuer is of a token that we trust. And then here we're saying where the keys are. And at runtime, Snowflake can use that uh, JWS keys URL to actually look up what the public keys are for the um, for the tokens that we send it. And then the audience list is basically saying these are the registration IDs within the tenant that can use this uh, integration. And we only have one right now, but you notice that's a list, so we could have multiples if we had multiple app registrations. So let's run that. That will create a new integration within Snowflake. And I get this message as credit successfully. And at any time, you can go back and look and you know look at these later. There's a, a complimentary command uh, to, to look at or describe the security integration. We pass it the name and we should see the values that we put in before. So if we sort of forgot how we set it up, we can just go back and look later. But we can see here, um, all those values that we put in have found um, have found a home within the Snowflake environment. Okay, so that's pretty much it on setting up the Snowflake side. And this is essentially a SAML configuration that we've added to Snowflake so that it can trust an external identity provider. And then now we're done with step two. So Snowflake Data Warehouse, I'm going to put a green check there. So we're done with that. And now I just want to revisit this and say, okay, how are we going to use this? Well, we're going to have a user. So Robert Kurt ICC, that's going to be the user. And if I kind of look at that user and see what roles that user has. So that user is a member of DW users. So now let's head over and um, I actually want to go and log in as that user. So that Rob at Curdy.cc user, I'm going to sign in or switch my session to use that user instead. And I want to show you what we're going to do in the application, but I'm going to do it first in Snowflake so that you can just kind of sense of it. So I log in with my Authenticator app. And if I look at the user now is um, Rob at Curdy.cc and the DW users is my default role, so that's that's the role I'm going to use right now. And I'm going to go and create a worksheet and query this table. So eventually I'm going to query this table from React, but first I'm just going to do it here. So you can see my DW users, my warehouse is there, and within the public schema, I only have one table, this forecast table. That's all I can see is this user. And so what I'm going to do is just, um, let's just query this table to see what's in it. This is what we're doing querying from React. Um, we're doing it, you know, obviously from Snowflake right now, but we're going to enable this to happen from a custom app. So the React app is uh, you know, everything's done on both Entra and Snowflake at this point, and we just need to integrate this in React. Now I'm not going to go through building the entire app from scratch. It's kind of a complicated app, but I'm going to run it and show you what it does, and then we'll put the configurations into it, 
And what uh, what I really want to you know come back to and emphasize again is the authentication. So the the app registration allows localhost 3000, and that's it right now. And we can see that this app is also running on localhost 3000. So that has to match. If it doesn't match, then the 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 um, login to enter just won't work. So let's run the app. Very simple app. Um, uh, most of these buttons don't do anything, but I implemented one. So, so here I'm going to this uh, Snowflake test, and I can try to log in. Now, this isn't going to work yet, right? Because we haven't configured the app registration to the app. But I just want to show you, like, this is what happens if you don't have it configured right. You get this kind of a message. It's usually pretty instructive. And here it tells me that the request body must contain client ID. Well, I didn't, I didn't add that to the app yet, so that's why it doesn't work. So, let's go ahead and do that. And in this application, um, I've taken all these configuration values and putting them into the environment. Um, none of these are secrets, by the way. I mean, tenant ID, app ID, scope, you know, these are, they're not secrets. So it's kind of okay that they're in the environment. But let me go ahead and paste these in. So there's the tenant ID I got from the app registration, um, the app ID, uh, AKA client ID, um, this kind of means the same thing. So I'm gonna paste that in as well. Um, the scope, if you remember, the scope is that string that was created when we exposed an API, and the um, the session scope DW users. That's what that's what uh, Snowflake is going to be looking for. And DW users is essentially saying this is the role that users can use this um, the scope for. Now here's some Snowflake configuration uh, that's specific to Snowflake. Um, I'm going to put in. I, I need to put in the the instance of the warehouse. Um, I I. I I'm going to put in the role and the database and the schema. This will just make it easier in the application so that queries don't have to include all that information. So I put that in the environment in this case. Okay, so we configured the React, the React web app. Let's put a green check there. Let's run the app again and see if it works. So we'll go to the query screen. Now we're going to sign in and it should work. And if you see the AI Workbench is the name of the app that we put into the app registration. And um, we're asking the user if it's okay for us to do things on their behalf. Um, and hopefully they know what AI Workbench is. It's very important to get something descriptive so users aren't you know, surprised by that. But as I go and uh, put that in, now I get a, a, a toast that says the user logged in successfully. And I'm gonna try to run this SQL statement. You see it's select top 10 from the same table. Um, I have a breakpoint here, so let me bypass these breakpoints so that I can finish. And now, there we go. Okay, so there's that same output. Um, and you can, I actually put in DevW public forecast in here. I didn't really need to. I could have just said forecast. But let me just run a couple different queries just so they can show you that it's, you know this is dynamic. It is hitting Snowflake. It's passing in that access token that we got from the, uh, the scope. And, you know, it's working pretty well. And we'll try to log out. So if we log out from intro from the application, we go back to sign-in screen, we can log in again. This time we won't have to approve anymore because we already did that. You only have to, the user only has to accept the uh, the approval once. Now, let me talk a little about the access token because this is really where the magic happens. So in, in the code, what we're doing after we log in and before we make every call to Snowflake, we're actually fetching an access token they do get cached, so we're not really hitting enter every time, but but we're getting an access token from the mCell library, um, which is the uh, Microsoft's library to access Active Directory or Entra. And so when we submit the query, you can see here the first thing we're going to do is get an access token, and then later on we use the access token, but I just want to focus on getting the access token. And let me just set up, yeah, let's set a breakpoint here so we can, like, let this run. Okay, now we, we would have the access token. If I hover, I can see it. Now that access token is not human readable, but it can be. It's um, it's not really encrypted. It's signed, so it can be tested for validity, but it is kind of open, so, so we can look at it. So if I put that into the watch window, um, what I want to do now is grab the contents of that. Yeah, let's put access token here. Did that wrong? And now I'm just going to copy the value. And you can use, um, there are a number of websites you can use to look at tokens. I'm going to use some Microsoft's, which is um, jwt.ms. And so if I paste that in there, um, now these quotation marks are not part of the token, so let me get those out of there. Okay, now, now that I've just got a token in there, I can actually look at the decoded token 
And if I zoom in on this a little bit so I can get a better idea of what's here, I can see that um, you know it, it the scope is in here and it's it's correct. It's the session scope to the user. So that's what um, Snowflake's going to look for to see what role to apply. And I can see here is my UPN is my uh, my login ID on the on the intro side. And that has to match up with the configuration that I put into the integration in Snowflake. So if you remember, I told it to look in the UPN for the uh, for the username. And and here, if I revisit that, you know, we can see that UPN is what it's looking for, and the login name is uh, what it's going to match up to. So basically, it's going to look at the UPN in the token, pull out that value, and that becomes the login name in in uh, Snowflake. And because of all the trust that we established with keys and so on, uh, Snowflake is going to trust that this is who that user is. So that's the whole idea here. So that's the token. And and if we have problems with this integration, this is probably the best way to troubleshoot it. You know, is it passing a JWT that has everything that you really expected and that was configured in, um, in uh, Snowflake? So, yep, let's move that out of the way. And that's pretty much how that works. And what else do we want to cover here? Well, let's cover the actual query. So here we're doing a Snowflake query. Um, we're going to pass in SQL and the access token. So let's look at what the actual call to, to Snowflake looks like. And it's really just a post. So we're doing an uh, HTTP post. We're passing that access token in the authorization header. We're passing the SQL statement in the statement. And then all these parameters are, are just providing you know which warehouse, which role, blah, blah, blah. And if everything comes back successfully, Snowflake will send the, the result set in the uh, response payload. If it doesn't work, then we'll get error messages. We can parse those out and display those to users as well. Like maybe we put in the wrong table name or it doesn't exist. You know, we would get an error message that's pretty friendly uh, for that. So, but if we run this again and look at, um, I'm just going to look at like what's in the response data. So that's going to be um, response JSON and then it's um, just data. And we can see this is a, a list of, of uh, JSON objects. And there's 10 of them because we said top 10. And we can see that the content of that is the same as we expected from, from running it over on the, uh, on the Snowflake side. And then we also, you know, column headers come with it as well. So when we run it, it looks pretty much, you know, the same. And then the parsing of all those JSON objects, obviously we're doing that in React. So we get this nice kind of output. So the user is making queries. Um, they don't really know it's Snowflake. They authenticated to through Office 365 as far as they know. And uh, and then we use the access token from Entra, pass that to Snowflake, and then Snowflake runs the query and gives us the results. So so that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully that makes sense and, and uh, helps you in designing your own solutions. Um, if you have comments, let me know. And see you next time.